Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna create an equation that will show you how distance is a function of time. So basically we're gonna derive something. In this case just remember that deriving means creating an equation going on from basic principles and ideas that you may have, okay? So let's do it. So now first of all the equation or the main, the, the smallest part in which we're going to start is the simple equation that velocity as a vector is just displacement divided a time, okay? I could write, I uh, remember, change in time, but just for the sake of, um, you know, just seeing things clear, I'm not going to place delta. So we have this equation, and now we're going to show that displacement is a function of time, so we need to rearrange it. Now, uh, going on from this equation, let me just start writing up here, so you guys see it. Now we know v is equal to s over t, which means that displacement is equal to vector uh, vector velocity times time. So now from this we can start making assumptions and in make it using some intuition. Now we know this velocity in here, if we have one dimensional kinematics, this is just simply an average velocity. Because we're taking, we're just simply saying, well, supposing there is no acceleration um, between in a frame of time, what is the change in position, which is just velocity. So in this case, we could also write this equation as, uh, we could say that equation is just simply displacement. And now we know an average is the addition of elements divided the number of elements. So this would be initial velocity plus final velocity divided two times time. And now uh, let me put these parentheses in here, times time, okay? And now let's keep going so we can add some more variables into this. So now I want to show you how you can place acceleration in this equation that we have here, okay? Um, so going on, how do we, how do we get acceler acceleration in there? We need to play with final velocity. We know final velocity is your change in velocity starting from an initial velocity. If you are in, let's say, your velocity is equal to 10 kilometers per hour and you end up at let's say 12 kilometers per hour okay just the change in your velocity or the way in which you can compute 12 kilometers per hour is just multiplying your acceleration times the amount of time that it took you to get to 12 kilometers per hour that is just simply saying the following so we have displacement is equal to an initial velocity, and our final velocity we could say is equal to, as I said, an initial velocity plus the change I need to apply or the change that needs to happen to get to that final velocity, which is initial velocity plus acceleration times time, okay? Acceleration is just saying how much you will increase, and time is just saying for how long you will increase. Or well, I'm saying you, but when I say you, just imagine you're some sort of object that is moving, okay? I mean, when an object is moving, this will describe his change, his net change in velocity, or not maybe not his net change, but the final velocity E will reach, okay? So now we can place this, we can replace B um, final velocity with this. So we would get, so initial velocity plus initial velocity um, plus acceleration times time, all of this divided by 2, and all of this multiplied by time. And now what we can do here, well, let's just simplify, so let's see what we get. So we would have displacement is equal to 2vi plus acceleration times time. All of this divided by 2, and I need parentheses and multiplied by time. Now we know we can distribute this denominator into both terms on top, so we would get that displacement is equal to, um, you can cancel out those two twos, so you would get displacement is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time divided two, and all of these multiplied by time. Now you may start to see right now the pattern that we follow to get to a very common equation in physics that is the following. So let's distribute t into these terms inside the parentheses. So we get that displacement is equal to um, t times initial velocity plus acceleration times square 
We're, we're, we're multiplying twice time and all of these divided by two. Now, this is an equation that you may have seen before, okay? It is a pretty common equation. And in this case, we're saying that this is a, if you say, I mean, this is a quadratic equation. We have, uh, in this case, x, you know, if you want to see it, um, all of these, let me show you, is the same thing as if we said, I mean, algebra, for example, that we have a function, just let's just say in this case, s, just to keep it like this, is s of x is equal to, um, in this case, it would be one half of a, co a coefficient that in this case would be a acceleration because it would be a constant in this case, supposing acceleration is constant, times x squared plus a coefficient, which would be our initial velocity, times x, okay? Now, this is a quadratic equation. Maybe you can see this, I mean, the form in algebra a bit clearer this way. Uh, so, basically, what we're saying is that displacement is a function of time in this equation. And the thing or the variable that is changing uh, is time, and it's a quadratic equation. This will give you an exponential. If you, I mean, this would be a, a parabola to in the positive quadrant. Okay, and that makes sense because if we have something like this, let's say, if we have, for example, I'm gonna write it here. If we have this and we're gonna say that this is displacement and this is gonna be time. Basically, since there is a constant acceleration, that means that our velocity, supposing, for example, uh, let's suppose acceleration is positive. In this case, our velocity would increase. So our displacement, we will like half a parabola, you know, it would keep going up, up, up. And in a shorter amount of time, the displacement would be going even up and up and up. Okay. Now you could, you could derive this, um, differentiate this equation to see it as a derivative and see how the rate of change starts to, I mean, how the rate of change or the, the accel the right way of saying it would be how acceleration affects the rate of change of position which that would just be velocity, okay? Now this equation, it's the it's derivation, it's pretty cool. And it just shows you that, well, displacement is a function of time. Okay, so you can write it like this. The vector, the, well, just displacement is a function or is a value that will depend on time given some parameters and some coefficients as a quadratic equation that will be acceleration and initial velocity, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this derivation. It's pretty cool. Um, and of course, well, from these derivations, you can take out a lot of equations. For example, that uh, velocity, you know, average velocity is equal to this part. It's probably very common that you have seen it before. Initial velocity plus final divided two. That is, that is another equation. So um, from this, you can take out a, a lot of things, okay? And learn a lot. A lot of things too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you in the following one.